sometimes you see something moving in the hedges and you think, oh, hang on, is it one of those? And is it, is it? And you're all lined up with our binoculars looking. We'll get the guidebooks out. It's just a real buzz. There's a fantastic diversity of wildlife around us and we're not really aware of the sounds and the smells and, you know, this is the world that we live in and, and we, we should be interacting with it and connecting with it a little bit more. We've been in our house for about nine years now and our species count at the moment is 63, which is, I think, quite good going, actually. The most species that we see on the feeders are your classic garden birds like the blue tit, uh, the great tit, green finches, grey spotted woodpeckers, what else do we get? Nut hatches, beautiful bullfinch this morning as well, male bullfinch with a really big resplendent orange chest, lovely. A lot of these species are brightly coloured, they're not brown so they're really easy to spot. A robin. Male bullfinch, can you just see that red bit there? There's the red grass. Bird watching is a very accessible pastime. There's always something to see and it's it's entertaining, it's educational, it's fun and it's free. It's very easy to teach children maybe just five different species of garden bird. Why is it called a black bird? Because it's black. Because it's black! And if you've taught your children five, they'll want to learn about another five. If you want to encourage birds into your garden, all you need to do is put out your bird feeders and keep them topped up every single day. It's a very easy meal for them if they come into your feeders. You know, there it is, it's like a takeaway. The niger seed, the very fine, small black seed, will attract things like goldfinches. And then um, we've got sunflower seeds and peanuts, and that will bring in a lot of different species. Fat balls are quite popular now, but if you want to make your own, it's so easy and really, really cheap. So you just get a lump of lard, you get a, a mixture of seeds, you can put all sorts of things in it, like sunflower hearts and millet. Melt the lard, mix it all up, squidge it into a yoghurt pot with a bit of string in it, or I used half a coconut shell, put it in the fridge or let it set for 10 minutes, half an hour, and then hang it out. And that is really energy rich food for the birds. We've sighted our feeders quite close to some dense shrubs and hedge because a lot of the birds, they want to sit somewhere that feels secure, come in, grab some food and then retreat away. They don't hang around on the feeders, they'd rather be somewhere a bit more protected. Try and put feeders where you can see them. I've got this great spot where I'm washing up and I can see the bird feeders and I'm watching them all the time. You need to have a little scruffy bit of your garden where there are a few weeds, maybe a little pile of logs or twigs or something like that. That makes for a lot of insect life and there are many, many bird species that feed on insects. The more areas, the more different habitats you've got, the more diverse a wildlife that you'll have in your garden. The thing about birds is they're ubiquitous. They are absolutely everywhere. If you look out of your bedroom window, you'll probably see a bird. If you look out of your office window, you see a bird. If you're driving to work, you will see birds. They're a really good way into getting people connected with nature. If you can get people bird watching, they'll be hooked for life.